as a PA announcer for Adair as well, I always enjoy seeing the kids get excited because everything you do, man, for high school sports is about the kids. To get messages for kids texting me like, Mr. Gardner, man, we love hearing your voice when you, you know, one of my trademark was always as they get ready to round their tongue. It's like, ladies and gentlemen, please get on your feet and get ready to welcome the best team in the land, your Adairsville. And hold out Adairsville for about 20 seconds. And then at the end, Tigers. And then everybody about that time and about lost it. Popcorn going everywhere. Dog on Poway and drinks flying all over the place. Everybody's, you're building the excitement. Okay. You know, so to see the kids be hyping, everybody going crazy, let's go. That's great, you know. Um, in radio, same concept, a little different. Because in public address announcing, you only talk after the play and before the next play. You know, radio, you don't shut up. <laughs> you know, so I'll give you a prime example. One of our number one rivals here today was Cass. You know, and last year, we went into overtime. Cass took the lead and scored. Adairs came back and we scored. Well, we were down by one, waiting the extra point. Coach Bishop at the time said, you know what? We're gonna go for two. So they hand the ball off to Chris Roper. Chris Roper runs right side, dives over the pile line. One of the greatest calls I've ever had. Tigers win, Tigers win, Tigers win, Tigers win. Chris Roper over the right side, Tigers win. Cass goes down. The fans going nuts. Listen to this crowd. <sighs> You know, when you've got people who live in Kentucky, who got grandkids who attend the school, when you've got family members who can't get here but can tune in through the means of the internet and will tell you, Larry, we love listening to you on Friday nights. The way you paint the picture, the way you make us feel like we're right in the stadium with you, the way you make us feel like Man, we wish we had video to go along with this because, man, this is just amazing to listen to you call a game. It's all worth it. And it goes back to always working on your craft. If you know the ultimate goal is to be able to get into professional sports to where you can do baseball play-by-play, -play, basketball play-by-play, -play, football play-by-play, -play, well, you got to start at the high school level, and then hopefully you'll get recognized by somebody in college as you do that. Then you move up, or you can get lucky like me and have somebody pay attention to you while you're in high school and want to bring you up to the big leagues. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's the prototypical LeBron James from high school to pros. And, and that, in a nutshell, says, Larry, everything that you've been working on since you got out of high school is now coming to fruition and it's been well worth it. Uh, quick nugget, I do DJing for parties and things of that nature around the area and my DJ name is DJ Home Team. Okay. And the reason is because since the time I was able to talk, I've always been a Braves, Falcons, Hawks, even Thrashers, and now an Atlanta United fan. From the days of the powder blue uniforms with the Braves, from uh, I'll throw out some nostalgic names that people can remember when Joe Torrey was managing the Braves. You know, you had Brett Butler, and I think everybody in our neighborhood tried to emulate Dale Murphy's swing. You would sit there the first time you get into the Little League or rec ball, I can still hear, visualize and, and see it to this day, the twist up at the top and the couple of shakes at the bottom to bring it right back up at the top for Dale Murphy. You know, you, you think about Glenn Hubbard, Ken Oberfell, Claudel Washington, you know, Bruce Benedict, Pasquale Perez driving around 285 because he can't find the stadium. You know, those are some of the highlights of Braves country that, that, that were awful times for fans because you would lose all the time. You'd have an MVP in Dale Murphy, but you'd lose him and never made the playoffs. And in our middle school and high school years, you get to see the, the worst of the first teams with Terry Pendleton and David <clears throat> Justice. And everybody remembers Mark Lemke, Javi Lopez, you know, the, 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 the Lonnie Smith, Otis Nixon, Deion Sanders. And one of the things that Deion shows in that is he goes in a playoff game and plays with the, the Braves and then turns around and plays in a football game in Miami, you know. Those memories that stick out and, and to see Atlanta Fulton County Stadium when it first came out with the Tomahawk Chops and you could see and hear the energy even during the broadcast where you could just hear the, the 40,000 fans in unison with the Tomahawk Chop and the red foam Tomahawks even when we were athletes playing basketball uh, 
here to Darisville on the way home, people would have their radios out. You know, that's an old school term now because you got phones and technology, but you'd have to have a radio out just to be able to listen to the game. And when they earned their first World Series berth, man, I can remember the driving home on the bus. Uh, we was coming back from a basketball game. I, I think it was either trying, or I think it was trying, but everybody's excited. Bus going nuts, raising the World Series. And to see them lose that first one against the Twins, uh, the second one against uh, the Blue Jays in 92, not being able to get to it again and get past the Phillies in 93 before the strike shortened season in 94. And in 95, seeing them being able to win it all. Everybody remember to see it sliding, but to still hear Skip Carey's voice and to see the fly ball going into Marquise Grissom's glove and to hear Skip Carey say the Atlanta Braves have uh, given you a world championship and listen to this crowd and everybody's going ballistic. Huge. Senior, it was my senior year in high school, um, which was which was great. And then the next couple of years we get beat by the Yankees when we probably should have won. And the, the God knows what, 15, 16 division championships in a row before we go through another rebuilding process uh, in the, the, the late 2000s to the time of Jason Hayward and him showing up and going crazy and, and thinking that he was going to be the next one with him and Freddie Freeman and those years that were lean, but now you're starting to get a lot of, uh, of times that led us up to the, the Ronald Acuna's, the Ozzy Albies's, you know, Dan's, even though he's no longer a brave and everybody still remembers the Jorge Soler moonshot that was probably the baseball that busted the Chinese balloon over South Carolina, you know, that finally decided to come down. People remember those things. So, um, First time I actually went to a Braves game, I can remember we were in first grade and they used to give you uh, slips for reading books. And if you read so many books, they gave you Braves tickets. You know, they give you a voucher you could exchange for a Braves ticket. Now it was nosebleed seats, but it got you in the building. So first time you pull up, you see Atlanta Fulton County Stadium, the big circle, uh, you walk in and and everything is just new to you. And you, you walk up the steps and the usher greets you and you walk in and you just see the, the field and, and Chief Nakahoma in his tent out there in the outfield and uh, Homer the Brave who was the mascot at that point in time. The, the, the Indian Chief that was walking around, it was surreal. And then we actually got to meet Homer the Brave. He actually came to Adair's Elementary School, I think about third or fourth grade year. And we got to meet him as well and it was just starstruck at that point. But I, I've been a Braves fan for as long back as I can remember. You would be welcoming the fans to Truist Park, letting, letting them know that the gates are open. You would be introducing both the visiting and the home team starting lineups, okay. as well as substitutions or any other important information during the game. <coughs> you would be announcing various, uh, I, don't, I, don't even, I guess you would call them special events that would be taking place during the stadium. For example, um, if you've ever been to Truist Park, you know they do the Home Depot bucket race, the tool race. You know they do the uh, racetrack home run inning. You know they do the race the freeze promotion. So you would announce those uh, before it is hand tossed to the in-game host announcer who will then of course engage the fans and let them know exactly what to expect things of that nature, any special announcements that the whole stadium needs to know. Um, of course, you'll get the in-game wrap-up, and you will also wish the fans a good evening and a safe drive home, letting them know that they can listen to uh, the post-game show and whatever network is going to be carrying it. From what we understand, it's still 680 The Fan, which is the local affiliate Brave station uh, where they do the majority of uh, Braves radio. So, and of course there are a whole bunch of affiliates everywhere, but that would be the main one. Um, thank you for the entire city of Adairsville and its community. My, I, I call them my 306 natives. I, I can't thank them enough. I'm thankful for the Atlanta Braves organization for thinking enough about me and what they saw, the things that I could potentially be the next voice of the Braves, huge. But, I know this is gonna sound crazy, but I'm thankful for all the people that told me no along the way. And the reason being is because the more they begin to tell me no, the harder I would work. You know, you don't, 
life is but a vapor. And you don't think almost 30 years between 19 and now that your door is going to open. But if the promise has been made, the door is going to be available to you. We just want it to be quicker because we're in a microwave society. Everything needs to be air fried, you know. But some of the best meals you ever get are in a slow cooker, you know. Some of the best meals you ever get come out of grandma oven that took the time for it to be able to prepare and put the ingredients and put the work in. And when it comes out of the oven and you walk in and you get that aroma, oh, you know, you're about to smash because grandma would have put it down. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, to everyone that's ever told me no, thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it because it's, it's built me for this moment. <laughs>